Hi, this is Matt Thomas with another tech tip for Sonic Academy. What I'm going to show you now is how to use an envelope follower from uh, Ableton Suite in the Max for Live section to generate little groovy synth lines without you ever having to touch a keyboard. Quite nice when you find yourself writing the same riffs all the time, or if you're just not a keyboard player and you'd like to do something a little more complex than your fingers are allowing you. Envelope follower, you might have encountered it before in the auto filter. Essentially, um, the louder the signal that comes into an envelope follower, uh, the bigger a sort of modulation signal it kicks out. So as the beats are sort of banging away, it kicks out a lot of modulation. And in the case of the auto filter, it opens and closes the cutoff. So you'll have encountered it there. All we're doing here is setting up our own envelope follower and routing that into uh, an oscillator. So I've got one set up here. So you can sort of hear what the end result we're aiming for is, and I'll take you through how I've put that together. So we've got the um, the track we've been working with. And I'm going to give us the, um, the oscillator that's being uh, controlled in pitch from the volume of the, uh, the beat that we've got there. Okay, so the beat, beat is generating a modulation signal via an envelope follower that's being fed to this frequency you'll see it start to leap around in a second and that just creates a mad little tune here we go So there you go, a nice little complicated, wiggly little uh, acidic kind of sequence that would be a bit of a, a bit of a fiddly one to program if you're not that confident. But you can make something like this just by using your ear and adjusting a few controls in about five minutes. So let's do that now. So what I'm going to do is create an instrument track, which we can drag this simple OSC here in M4L, the, uh, the Max for Live stuff you get with Ableton Suite. You can just drop this oscillator on there. Okay, and there we go. It just makes whatever pitch it's set to. It's an oscillator with no other sort of uh, modules around it, so there's no control of volume or tonality. It simply just makes a sine wave at the pitch. So the first thing we want to do is we want to control that pitch with the uh, envelope follower, which is up in Max for Live Audio Effects. So we look at Max for Live Audio Effects, and there we go, there's an envelope follower. Now, I was using the uh, the drum beat, so I'll get rid of the one we had. Okay, so go onto the channel with the drum beat, and we want the volume of these drums to create a signal that we can then route into that oscillator. So I'm going to drop the envelope follower on the beat, and I'm going to route it to the pitch of this oscillator here. How that's done is I press MAP, on the envelope follower, then I click on the track I'm interested in, and then I click the parameter I want to work on, and that's it, that should now. He said, yeah, there we go, we're mapped to frequency there, see? Okay, so now, what should happen is when I play this beat back, it should generate a rising and falling signal, which is then fed to this oscillator here. Let's see if that's what happens. And there we go, we've got success. You can hear it sort of as each kind of loud drum hit lands, it's kind of sweeping up to the highest frequency and in the little gaps it's shooting back down to the lowest and so you've got that. It's a good kind of zappy thing and you can stick that through a bunch of delays and you've got like a pretty sort of a zappy kind of techno leady kind of thing you can bring in but it's not terribly musically useful. So what we want to do is we want to control the range it works across. Okay, that's these two here. So if we left at 0 and 100, it's just going to go from the lowest frequency it possibly can to the highest every time it sweeps. Now we don't want that much movement, so let's bring it down to like say 35 and bring the bottom up a little bit. See what that does. Okay, it's a little deep, so let's bring this up.
Okay, it's a little high pitch. Once you kind of set the the range of high and low, you also can sort of control the rise and fall, how quickly the envelope follower responds to volume, which again might kind of give you more of a sort of slightly slurry, sweepy effect, might be more musical than just this quick leap up and down thing. So by slowing how fast the envelope follower responds with the rise here, we've got something a little more interesting. If we set both rise and fall, then we end up with a kind of like a completely sliding, slippering. Whereas that's more my cup of tea, actually, I think that's a bit more interesting. I'm gonna go a bit higher on the pitch. As you heard on the, uh, the one I'd set up previously, I also had a couple of extra things to give it a bit more sort of definition. Saturator, so I can give it kind of control of the tone because the only thing coming out of that um, oscillator is a sine wave. So audio effects, saturator, drag that over here. So there you go, with the saturator you can start adding in new harmonics and obviously if you automate the drive and the output so as one comes up and one comes down you can actually use this to sort of build sounds um, up through the arrangement so it can start out as quite a soft noise, you can kind of bring it up, there you go, there you go, it's running away at the bottom there. So you can use that to kind of like you know make it more prominent through the arrangement, same way you like overdrive like acid stuff and so on. Before you can also uh, gate it and side chain that gate off the same beat. So let's have the dry beat. So we're using again the same drum beat to provide a, uh, a gating signal. And so we should only kind of get like the uh, oscillators coming through now when the beats are clicking through loudly. <laughs> A nice little simple acidic line without you having to play a single note on the keyboard. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please. We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.